Okay. So here we go. So the we save the game. We we basically boot a new game server, and then the game server is joined by the user, and then we save the game server. So essentially, the socket is now remembering a user ID and a PID process ID for whatever game server it's. Um, talking to and then we return the socket okay and then when the game requests to start let's just log this out as well and say io.put um, user requested to start and we can say the user id is like this equal to the socket user id and the uh in the game game server pid is equal to the socket game server pid right and I might just break these up a little bit. Okay. And let's extract that and rename that. Game server PID. And then we get a game state. Okay. And then we reply apply with the game state and this is now oh I should be using dot assigns here Okay, and I think I'm going to need to start uh, writing some tests. So we've now got, we added this thing called uh, XUnit Watch or something. So we now have a uh, file system watcher. Okay, here we go. Um, room channel 28. Uh, is it plus? Maybe I'm just thinking Ruby. Okay, that seemed to work. Uh, could not start application. Um, the module commune present was given as a child to a supervisor, but it does not exist. Uh, it's supposed to be commune web. Silly me. Okay, so let's go into our mix and find oh not mix our application and find this and it should be a commune web and we'll just put it down there before the present stuff cool so our tests are now passing and i think that is a good place to commit And where did we get to on here? Are we done? Okay. Add dummy start call to drift game server. Okay, cool. And we'll just say like added presence. It's essentially all we've done, right? I mean, we've, we've done a little bit more, but we'll just say we have added presence. Okay. And then let's take a look at this demo and figure out uh, what what was happening here in, um, in order to support the presence. So after join, we push the present state 
Okay. So we can handle that. Uh, in our room channel. After join, okay, so okay, we, so we start tracking the uh, the online time here, and Okay, so yeah, we're sorry, we're already doing that and we're actually doing better than what, what's there because we're saving the thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. And I don't know if there's anything else here. Uh, I guess we'll. Okay, what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to run the server in um, Studio Code. What I'm going to actually run the server in iTerm, and that way we can see the log of the server next to the game. So if we CD into development and go into uh, UI platform, cool, and let's run our mix task fix short for phoenix dot server and I'm expecting this to crash oh no cool no crash fantastic okay So now let's boot up our game and we will drag that a little bit over here and I think what we did was that we actually turned off the connect somewhere, connect socket, oh no. Okay, I'm going to have a look and see if there is a shorthand for Godot. Uh, output to screen. Um, see if there's like an easy way to do this. Um, also an info right? Okay, yeah, this is sort of what I was looking for. In-game console, yeah. Okay. Let's go and whoop. Let's download that and let's go give him some love on GitHub. Star and maybe read through this uh, writing to console using write, write line method, okay. Okay, so we just need to put plonk that in our add-ons folder. Cool. Alright. 
so. Fantastic. So. <clears throat> ah, yeah, I should probably make sure I've got Discord running. No, 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 not right now. Okay. So let's, we can delete these. No, we don't need them anymore. Whoa, nope, don't need that. And, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to remove that. And I think, I, okay, so let's, put this here in our add-ons and paste it and he does say even though I don't think it's quite important oh god uh, all right he does say he wants us to call this what Uh, Quentin Caffino console and the, I mean there are the three me will just be this right <clears throat> add new actions to the okay so we need a console toggle button So we need to go to our product uh, project settings, plugins, and uh, okay. And let's just add a new action, and we'll call it console toggle. And I think we want that to be uh, escape. Okay, so now Okay, oh, of course it's not working because we haven't enabled it Not too sure why that is not appearing. I think this might have been an old version, an old version of Godot. But what I will do, just in case, is I will uh, quit the editor and then restart and see if maybe that makes a difference. Okay, no biggie, no biggie. Uh, 
That's fine, that's fine. So we're not really seeing any connections happening here. Uh, is connecting true, socket error is connecting false. Socket is connected, so during channel. Disconnect. Okay. So it looks like it was tr connecting over and over again. Uh, Not what we were seeing last night, was it? Okay, so let's have a look. Web socket localhost for thousand socket, and then drifter. <sighs> Default socket URL yet. Okay, so we might just comment out this stuff for now. And the channel name, room default. Game name is game name, scrub channel events. And then we add the socket to our network. And then we connect. So. Here I'm just going to log uh, connecting socket and then I'm gonna, gonna just number the events in the order that I expect them and then we can sort of just figure out what's happening and, and what's not happening in what order. So I think what should happen then is on two um socket opened and then and then we expect a three on socket is connecting and then we expect eventually a four that three should probably might prob might take a couple of times Oh, what, what? That's not supposed to happen. Okay, let's have a look at this um, demo and see. Uh, when was this last? Good 03. Okay. So it is if it is connecting. On socket connecting is connecting. Uh, okay. And where does he call the channel dot join? just does it there oh maybe we need to set topic okay so here we should say like channel dot set topic and 
uh, we'll just call it the channel name. Maybe we'll call it channel topic. Oh. Um, what's the difference between channel name and topic? Okay, screw it, we'll just, we'll... So we'll just say... Channel name. So I guess the channel name is room. Oh, I see, I see what's going wrong. Okay, and then that might explain why we're not seeing a lot here. Okay, so the channel name is room and the we can export this as well. The uh, topic is just default, I believe. And then here we create the channel of the channel name. And here we set the topic. Do we call it topic name? No, we should have. Okay, topic name. And then we join. And then what we expect is a five on channel event, then a six on join result. At this point, we push the start event down the wire, and then we expect another five there. So let's just put five and seven. Kind of. Okay. Let's bring Godot out of full screen mode. So we're getting one, three, four. Okay, so we're not getting two. Why are we not getting two? Socket open. Um, on open, on socket open. Huh. Message connection error, okay. And here we're not getting anything, are we? So if I close this, like, we don't seem to be getting much of anything. Is it HTTP? Um, okay, that's odd. So if I go to HTTP, localhost 4000 I expect to see this and I can see I've joined joined successfully to the WebSocket and then if I write So we can go into our JavaScript code here and prove, I oh, not prove, 
um, assets Java app so, socket okay good so socket dot channel room lobby let's say room default and then we can say join successfully right and then at this point we can say channel dot uh, push start and we can just say uh, bogus start conditions and then what do we expect um, so then we can say like here before we join we can say channel dot on message and we'll just see what were we sending back here uh, reply oh and that should actually be a um, start success I mean, it could just be a start, right? And then the socket would receive the start event. Uh, what? Okay, well, let's just see if we can trigger stuff here. Okay, what's happening? Phoenix does not implement access behavior. Socket.fetch uh, 2 is undefined. Okay, I know why. Uh, where is it though? In the room channel 19. Okay, so it's because I was doing some weird stuff. So it should be signs and now uh, room channel 19 again Oop, forgot to remove that user ID not found all right that's fine so uh, hmm we should have got that right should already be part of the socket So I think what happened was uh, we were already connected. Join crashed, join crashed, okay. User ID not found in. Oh, that debugger is complaining as well, isn't it? Um, IO dot inspect socket. A 
There we go. All right. So the user has interesting. I'm doing something wrong in the assign. Uh, so let's go and find the Phoenix channel and have a look here. It looks like this is not actually getting called. Use this socket. User connected to socket. Yeah, with the user ID. Okay. So sorry, it didn't. So the problem is that socket's not getting updated. Oh, oh God, I'm so silly. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's that's the problem there. I am, I forgot. <laughs> Everything in Elixir is immutable. So now, uh, when we refresh, uh, oh yeah, let's just remove that little bit of stuff. Uh, where will it be? Um, and templates layout and okay cool fantastic join successfully so we keep joining <laughs> uh, and we keep crashing uh, bad argument and arithmetic uh, okay Room channel number line number twenty seven. Let's have a look. Okay, we don't need um, we don't need all of that additional information. So let's just do it a little bit like that. Definitely need to do a little bit more TDD here. Okay, so uh, here, let's have a look. Room channel 29. Yep, sorry, I keep doing that as well. Assigns dot, and then we call. Cool. Call two is undefined, All right? Um, whereabouts is that? So we are getting that those bogus start conditions in there. Room channel thirty. Um, uh, 
Okay, so let's just check the uh, gen server documentation, which will be over here. not quite here. It's just going to be in the Elixir Lang. Elixir Lang. Okay. And uh, learning or no docs. And it's part of elixir okay and it's going to be right at the bottom i think all right there we go gen server okay uh <clears throat> pid pop handle call pop so we want that to be a, t a tuple Tuple from and state, right? So in our game server now, we expect to receive no. Uh, we can close that close that for now <clears throat> so the game server is expected to receive PID and payload and then hand uh, when we call with PID and payload we call uh, gen server dot okay and that is not quite what we expect it to be so they have a look at call needs three arguments the server the request the timer okay so so that's a, that's got a default value so should we, we shouldn't need to do anything more than that uh, And then what? Huh? And then what? Okay, let's just read this error through a little bit more. And so game server .call is undefined. Module game server is not available. Oh, huh. So, from room channel, what we really want to be doing here is saying uh, Cool. So we're just going to pull this in and alias this as game server and then that should get us past this error. And finally, this is uh, not finally, but this is a new error, which is a good sign. Um, channel replies from handle in are expected to be status and response. So we need a reply. Okay, so okay. Reply tuple socket. So reply tuple socket, that looks like it's right. Reply tuple. We'll just say okay. No. Wait, what? Oh, does this need to be okay? And then the game state yeah okay so nice so we were we received start on the d in the default room and 
let's just check if the browser, if the JavaScript implementation is receiving the game state. Um, do we have, I think we have a bogus game state, right? Bogus state. So let's just check the web socket. Uh, so we can filter out just web sockets here. And that one is, that one's going to be our live reload. And this one is going to be the one we actually are interested in. And we're just getting okay there. So let's think about this. So is the user requesting to start? Heartbeat. Oh, hold on. Maybe that's the one I meant. So response bogus and then a not a string. I'm, I've used the wrong. I've used yeah single <laughs> quotes. So when you use single quotes, it's going to convert those um, letters to uh, an array of integers. So now, what we should see is bogus state. All right, cool. So our JavaScript, we we now know that our JavaScript implementation is correct. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit that, um, not, sorry, not our JavaScript. So we, we've verified using JavaScript that our Elixir server is returning a start state for the game, right? And so we're going to say, um, client receives bogus start state when they send the start event, right? Push that up. Okay, so now everything from now on is, until we can see that bogus start state, we know that it's all in Godot's hands. And that's going to that's going to mean a little bit more sanity for us, I think. Uh, all right, so I'm, before I even start, I'm just going to go through all of these little errors here and just make sure on collide with player. Uh, Q3, OK. All right, so we're not going to use the player right now, but we will later, so that makes sense. The signal collided with is not used yes it's not we changed that so we can remove that connect returns a value okay so let's say val connection equals and let's just print connection and see what happens oh socket open worked three, four, five. Reason, unmatched topic. Okay, so that looks now like we've got something a little weird with the channel name. So I, I think this should definitely be room default. And the channel name, um, I'm just going to call room channel. I don't know. Let's just say default. And let's see if that connects now. Join crashed. Okay, so <clears throat> let's just restart the server and see. Okay. All right, that's fine. Cool. So what we want to do now is we want to handle the already started case so this makes sense all right so when the first user joins the game hey i b t d i i assume that's just b t d thank you for the follow how are you doing this evening okay so what's happening here right is when the first player tries to join there's no game server so we try and create it. 
And then when the second player tries to join, um, we, we try and create the game server again. And we knew this. We, um, if you look at last night, we knew this was going to happen. So this is happening here in this. Um, and so uh, I think we're going to use a, an, Alexa, uh, an Alexa case. And I, I'm still just a little... Uh, rusty on some of the stuff so you're gonna have to bear with me i haven't done i haven't written any elixir for about three or four months so and i have a tendency to just forget everything when i switch languages <laughs> um it might be a cond Yep, no, no, case, case, case. All right, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to case. Um, so we're going to say result is equal to this. Nope. Okay, so the result is equal to this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to case the result. And by uh, default, we're just going to go io.puts um, error could not start server. Usually we'd use a logger for this, but um, oh yeah, we need the underscore there. So the underscore is just like a match everything. And then what we're going to do is we're going to first of all, uh, let me just check, yep, arrow, okay, single arrow. So if if we start the server and we just get the OK PID, then, uh, whoa, didn't mean to do that. And then that means, oh, OK, cool, we just return the PID. Right, oh no. Yeah, OK, so we don't, when we're calling internal functions, we don't need to worry about the tuples here, so we're just going to return the PID. And then in this interesting case where we got the error, right uh where was it yep you'll notice that elixir gives us an error a tuple with error and then a reason and then the reason itself is also a tuple and that contains a pid of the the game server that's clashing with this one so we're just going to return that and so that means that um, we can essentially uh, recreate the server. Well, essentially, we don't need to care if the server exists. We just keep trying to create it. And when it already exists, then we just get the PID back anyway. So cool. No worries, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to restart that server. And see how we're getting on you can see on the left there our game is um, helpfully connecting constantly and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close that JavaScript here because that JavaScript tab is also going to reconnect constantly and why does it keep moving it over there um, can I window always on top yeah go on test with uh, allow hide the eye oh. interesting okay so we're seeing now we're seeing a a bit of a loop we're seeing a Phoenix reply, but it doesn't look like we're seeing much more than that. Okay, so let's just restart the game and have a look. Zero. 
one connecting. Okay, so that's interesting. So the on connecting number three happens um, before number two, but it's saying is connecting true. So basically, on socket connecting true happens before the socket opens. Then we open the socket, then we get another socket connecting event, but this time it's false, which means the socket connection is ready. Then we get a socket is connected, starting to join the channel, and at which point we... Uh, what, what are we doing then? What's happening number five? Let me remind myself. So we're just getting a Phoenix reply with no payload. That's a bit odd. And then we die because we don't send the heartbeat, I think. Okay, so let's read through this log here and see what's happening. Joined the room, the default room with the game name Drifter. Uh, game server joined by so the the user is getting a different ID each time they join and that's fine I'm gonna I'm gonna implement this as like an anonymous game to begin with so every time if you disconnect and you reconnect well too bad you start over and you're a new player um, at least to begin with Um, okay, let's have a look now. I think that's just all happening way too fast. So it does look like our, uh, when we set the game server, Huh. Player joined the room. Okay, so it doesn't look like we're sending this. Oh yeah, we're definitely not sending this. On socket. Socket is connected. Starting to join the channel. Uh, so let's just... Let's just debugger here. Oh sorry, breakpoint. And uh, see what happens. Okay, so I'm interested in the channel. Okay, channel state. So what does channel state three mean? Let's have a look at this channel code. Uh, in fact, it might be better to just have a look at all of this stuff. So. Status results as a result. Why is that Phoenix reply not? Um... Not giving us much, is it? Um... So the channel is getting joined, right? Joined room default. Okay, maybe we're not doing what it expects here. Uh, so when you join... Okay, let's have a look at his code. And see what happens when he does the join.
Okay. Connection ID. And socket. So, let's say this is supposed to be um, okay so we can say that the user ID is equal to this and that allows us to remove that put that up there and then what we'll do is we will provide the user ID back to the user so they know who they are and let's refresh okay on channel event so we get the event Phoenix reply we get a payload of okay so we got our user ID which is really cool so we are we are communicating with the server this is the first piece of data we've actually received um, I don't really know what this channel name is supposed to represent but okay like we, we didn't need a channel name in our JavaScript implementation, did we? Uh, socket channel, that's the topic. Uh, so then our socket should have... Is connected, yes. Channels has an array. And that is our where does that channel name even go? I wonder if he's even using it. Okay, hold on, let's have a quick look. So are we using it? Socket.channel. Uh okay, so let's find let's find the channel. There's going to be a lot of channels, isn't there? Um, funk channel. Okay. Topic. What on earth? Okay, I think I, I think I've, I understand what's happening. Okay, so what we'll actually do is. Uh, if that's the case, if he's using the channel, channel name as a topic, then we'll just use the topic name here, right? And then we'll just get rid of the channel name because it just doesn't mean anything. And then let's look. So then we can sort of say what? Uh, so we've got a user ID, and this is where I guess we probably send the presence information back to the user. Uh, and we'll do that a bit later. So, Phoenix reply payload to payload on channel event. So if we if we remove this and we don't get a number six, then we can probably just check the payload, and we can put maybe like a ready true, and then if you get a channel event with a ready, then we call start. Or honestly, we could pr probably just get the game state already from this point. Phoenix reply. Okay. Cool. All right. So what we can do then, if that's going to be the case, 
what we'll do is when we give them okay so let's say um, join payload is equal to uh, that and then we'll play that place that in there and then we can say uh, ready tr 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 true cool and then when we oh hold on what if we said um, ready with the join payload is that how we're gonna send an event uh, no what's happening um, Jason code not ready for okay yeah yeah okay that's to be expected all right so yeah we can't do that uh i wonder if this would make a difference i'm just i'm, I'm confused how it's just always a phoenix reply Um, oh yeah, of course it's a reply because it's, there's no message being sent. This is just the join. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so the join play, payload, we're going to say, um, we're going to give the user back an ID so that they can, I don't know what they're going to do with it, but. It seems like the right, like a nice thing to do, right? Just give the user an ID. Users love IDs. cool so then what we say in our game server right is we say up here okay so we know we're definitely getting a one we're definitely getting the the two definitely uh, well we don't really care about that just yet and then we're getting the three I might keep the three in there and then starting to join channel we don't need to set the topic because that's going to be set by default now and then we get a we're not getting the six just yet i feel like on this on join results uh it's not getting called Okay, I'm just going to have a quick look at what this channel.join is doing. Oh yeah, I forgot there's this outline down here. <laughs> if not joined once, rejoin. If we're already joining or we, we are joined, then we just don't do anything. I don't understand what this join once is supposed to mean. I guess I'll just trust him. Okay, start rejoin.
if reset rejoin position is rejoin it's false rejoin position is less than default rejoin options. okay all right i see what's happening So essentially what we do is we try and join and then we wait an, a certain amount of seconds, which is defined in an array at the top of this thing, if I remember rightly. Uh, one of these. Okay. Start rejoin. All right. I feel like this some of this code could be a little bit nicer. Okay, so at which stage does our channel emit uh, on join result? There has to be somewhere else. Is that the only place? Because right now, I think that I think this is a bug. Because right now we're getting a uh, where was it an on event, right? When we probably should. So that happens in two places. So I think I think there's something wrong with this code, but I think we can work around it for now. Because that shouldn't I think that should actually be should be called. So like we should be get three, four, five, six, right? And then we should but that's fine okay so what we can say is we can say if payload I mean we could actually put this in just manually right and we could just say that the event is joined right and if the payload dot event and the payload dot event is equal to joined right then we push the start event right okay and let's just have a look here All right and string okay uh, Hmm. OK, 
connect returns value. Okay. Okay, let's find this connect thing. I don't know what they suggest we do this. Godot um, returns a value, but it's never used. I guess what we could do to stop that error, right, is we would say for print um, error on close. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that's not that's not my code. We'll clean it up later. Okay, so turn value discarded. Function join returns value. Push returns value. What does what does uh, channel push return us? True <clears throat> or false? Okay, I see. So what is in that payload now? Ah, oh, silly me. Using JavaScript style. Okay, and then that now means we can uncomment that line. Now, did the server get no? The server got something weird now. So, so let's see what happens then. So, we can say var result is equal to channel dot push print, and we can say uh, sent start message, and the result is result. And I guess the reason why this isn't working is because that is returning false. Mm. Okay, why is that returning false?
Uh, so the channel. If not, can push. Can push. Socket. Can push. Event. The socket. Uh, can push. And is connected. So how how is that socket not connected? Okay, so that's how he's doing it like that. All right, yeah, we I guess we can just do that. It's a little annoying, but, but yeah. Huh. I mean, if we just sort of hacked this a little bit. And return true here. What would our code look like? Uh, again. Okay, so we got. It looks like we got another um, payload dot has um, how will we do it? Pido has property. Um, Dictionary has has key. Cool. So if dictionary dot has event, then we can do that. Cool, and we just got the game state. All right, so it looks like we do have a bug in the socket. Uh, all right, so let's go into the socket and have a quick, oh, sorry, not in the, ch maybe in the channel, probably in the socket. Um, so let's say, let's do a break point here, right? and have a look at the socket. So why is that not connected? I think it's related to the reason why the join event is not firing. Um, Join ref. What is join ref supposed to be? Interesting. So, if 
we print here and we just say trigger and message, let's see what we get. Um, comment that one out. We really need some unit testing here, I think. Send start message result false. Trigger. So we triggered something. Uh, okay. Oh, this is quite a. Uh, Quite an, quite an odd little piece of code, to be honest. I thought this I thought this library was going to be more complete before I set out to do this. <laughs> That's cool. We can uh, we can improve it and then post it back up. Opportunity to do good. So we're triggering. It's not a message, is it? Uh, you know what? Let's just break point here. Okay, so when we get the message, the message is a node. Sorry, it's an object. And the message is what? Topic room default event Phoenix reply. Response status, okay. Okay. Status. So payload. Status okay, right? So what we can do is we can print this here and just say uh, print received message with status status. And uh, and let's just say uh, print message event, and that's going to be equal to the message dot get event. Okay, and just have a look, a look see. Uh, received message of status okay. And something, okay. So, something is a little bit off here. So, I think I think what's happening is when you join, it's creating a reference for the message. And then it, if the if the reply isn't a specific reply to that message, then It's, it's doing something different, but I think for some reason, ah, uh, okay, I'm starting, I'm, I've got an inkling of what this is going to be. So, Oops. 
Who are you, Alfred Baldich? I want to get inside your mind. And I want to pet your dog. So here in the game channel, when we join, Match ID, params, socket, con ID. After join, This is so opaque. <sighs> okay, so I'm pretty sure it has something to do with this. Uh, we're expecting this ref to be equal, but it's just not, right? Message ref. So we're expecting, uh, let's say, message dot get ref. Unless we try and join multiple times, is that the problem? Join ref. Like if I don't if I don't try and join a second time, does that just work? Message ref null one. Okay, so message ref. Um, <sighs> okay, okay, so maybe, maybe we can just Uh, get join ref. So if we try and get the join ref of that message, oops. So that might even be the bug, right? Uh, so what if we just call message dot get join ref, right? Um, and see what happens. No one no. No one no. Okay, so I'm gonna try one sneaky little thing first. So if I do this, I don't get any of this, right? I don't get any anything without manually joining. No. So we have to manually join. And no other no nothing is happening after this point, right? So so we're forced to do that. So then maybe what we can do here is say if message.getref is equal to join ref, what happens otherwise? Maybe that's just supposed to be like an else. Or maybe we can just say um, 
Alice, right? If the message dot get ref is equal to the message dot get join ref. Then we also emit the join result. Uh, and we say, what do we say? Uh, Okay, the state is equal to joined if it's okay otherwise. I think what we can do here is just put an or. Right. And then get rid of all this. And then if we restart, we got a Phoenix reply event joined user ID. Okay. And then at this point, when we get the join result, oh, and the one thing that's working, not working anymore is this like send can oh god okay can push is connected right and so when, oops. when we go into here If state is joined, right, then can we say socket underscore socket dot is connected equals true. I mean, the socket should already have set itself to be is connected. So let's have a look at the socket is connected. print um, setting socket is connected to true and then where else do we have this or I suppose we can say here setting socket is connected to false oh dear this library is not doing what I thought it would do Okay, 
So the only place we're assigning these values, right, is there and there. So at some point, I guess we're not setting the socket as connected. Setting socket is connected to true, socket is opening, on to connecting, socket is connected, so join channel, receiving screen. What? Okay, well, it has been a very long day, and I'm going to need to take some sleep <sighs> I hope um, I know this uh, the stream has been a little bit um, slow but I wanted to get us um, up and running before the big stream the proper stream scheduled for tomorrow at 2 p.m. and I didn't want to promote this either because I knew it was going to be a bit of a slog <laughs> and it was it's fine so I feel like we're really close though and I I think we've got most of the hard work done and so tomorrow we'll just need to tidy some stuff up and um, yeah just get on with it I guess Okay, so in conclusion, um, what we've done today is we've uh, just made a couple of tweaks to our Elixir server, and then we implemented the JavaScript client. And by doing that, we were able to verify that at least our Elixir code is correct. And that was a little bit of like a sanity check for us. So knowing that, it meant that we could focus on the Godot code without any doubt, which was uh, really important, right? So we made a few uh, changes to the Godot project and most of the issues we were seeing were our fault, but it does seem there's a couple of bugs in the library that we pulled in. And that makes sense. Uh, that library was more of a demo and it wasn't even published. So, um, I expect the author is probably only half done with it and I might even try and get in contact with him and see um, what he thinks uh, about the issues we're having or if he's still uh, interested in working on the project. Um, so tomorrow we will be doing some more game development streams, uh, streaming. Uh, I think we will try and do a little bit more like sort of graphical stuff and, and fun shiny shiny effects and that sort of thing uh, as long as we can get the basic networking stuff working uh, I think things will start to chug along at a, at a much faster pace but I'm, I'm definitely uh, I'm, I'm confident I think the game feels really nice and uh, you know even if we, even if we can't get the multiplayer aspect going I think the core gameplay is interesting enough that we could probably just keep building it in single player and uh, leave the multiplayer till a little bit later. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with the different projects we're doing, head over to sebthecat.com. There are a number of blog posts where we detail all the projects that we're doing and I try and make a note whenever I run into like a bug or something to publish it to the blog with a description of the bug and the um, solutions or the solution that I've found just so I can help you know whoever has the bug after me. Uh, 
there are a number of links in the uh, in the stream profile page. So we've got like a YouTube channel where I'm going to try and post stream summaries and uh, barring that just post the whole stream. Uh, I think we had a 17 gigabyte stream that I uploaded this morning because uh, it's all in 4K and that took a while. I tried to edit it but I think it was going to take 12 hours to encode the file and who has the time? Who has the time? So I didn't do that. I just pushed the whole thing up without editing it. Uh, tonight I think uh, because the stream is, has been shorter we might be able to edit it. We'll see. So check out uh, the the blog saidthecat.com. There is also a link to Twitter. I will try and tweet before we go live. And by popular demand, not tonight because tonight was not a we didn't promote the stream at all, so we've barely had anyone on. But by the popular demand last night, uh, I've set up a Discord server, and I've set up some channels for game development help, app development help. So if you want to post a question in the Discord, I will try and give you a response. And if you've got like an interesting problem, I'll, with your permission, um, try and bring it up on stream and maybe we can work through it together, do a bit of pairing. Uh, so I do think that uh, if you're sort of an aspiring game developer, app developer, and you want sort of a support network for your side projects, um, this might be the place. So I really hope uh, we can get some cool creative people in that Discord channel. I know that there was quite a bit of interest the other night. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. All right, well, I'm going to get some sleep. We all know how much cats love to sleep. So I'm going to have a lovely night off. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Don't forget to follow. As always, take it easy and ciao.